Oh, um, hold on. Hey, students. Today we're going to be starting our review for our trigonometry test that's coming up. We're going to be covering everything that we learned in trigonometry. And where we're going to be starting is with the basics of trig functions. And the basics would just be going over these guys that you are very familiar with at this point. The sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. These are our most basic trig functions. Okay? And these are just ratios. If you guys remember SOHCAHTOA, trigonometry is just the ratios of the sides of a triangle. Trig being tri, a triangle, and metric being measure. This is just the studies of triangles. And the way we remember these ratios is SOHCAHTOA. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's the way we remember these ratios. Now, let's take a look at this question, okay? To find the rest of these ratios, given the information. We want to find the remaining trigonomic function values using the given function value in the given quadrant. Now, this is what's given to us. We know the cosine of theta is 5 over 13, meaning the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side is 5 over 13. And this is in quadrant 1. Let's take a look at how we can use this information to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. Well, what we do is we draw our right triangle, okay? We draw a little right triangle, and we put our theta over here. And we know that the cosine of theta is 5, my adjacent, over my hypotenuse, over 13. Now, if I want to find the rest of these functions, I need to find this third side over here. And how could I do that? Well, I could use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find that third side and just plug in my values. But since we've seen this triangle so many times before, let's just fill it in because we know that this is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. And if you don't believe me, plug it in and find out. So to find out these ratios, I just now have to look at my triangle and find out for sine, what is my opposite over my hypotenuse? So my sine is my opposite over hypotenuse, 12 over 13. Check. My cosine has already been given to us. This is 5 over 13 and the tangent is the opposite over adjacent, and that's 12 over 5. So these are our basic trig values, okay? Now, why does it tell us it's in quadrant 1? That goes back to a very important concept that we learned, and that is the quadrants, we know different trig functions are, are positive in there. For example, remember I said that all student teachers cry? We use this chart to tell us that in the first quadrant, all trig functions are positive. In the second one, only sine is positive. In the third one, only tangent is positive. And in the fourth, only cosine is positive. So looking at these, since this is in quadrant one, which is over here, we know that all of these are going to be positive and nothing has to be changed. Now, if these were in different ones, that would be different depending on which trig function it was, but we got lucky on this one. All right, moving on. We're going to talk about angles, coterminal angles, and reference angles. Now, if you remember coterminal angles, a coterminal angle, by re definition, goes like this. If you were to draw an angle, let's say this angle right here, a coterminal angle is an angle that ends in the same exact place. So if I had another angle that went like this and ended right here in the same place, these two angles would be coterminal. And the way you find coterminal angles is if I start over here and I go all the way 360 around, I end up in the same exact place. So basically, all you have to do is add or subtract 360 because it doesn't matter if I go this way 360 or this way 360, I always end up in the same place. And that will find me my coterminal angle. So for example, if I wanted to find two coterminal angles with 35 degrees, one being positive and one that is negative, all I would have to do is take 35 degrees and add 360 to this. So if I add 360, I would come up with a coterminal angle. So that would be 395 degrees. That is one coterminal angle, and it's a positive one. And I could also subtract 360 from 35 degrees. Once again, I'd end up in the same exact spot. And if I subtract 360, I get negative 325 and that would also be a coterminal angle 
one positive, one negative. So all you have to do is add or subtract 360, and you end up with a coterminal angle. Reference angles are a little tougher. Let's go over two examples of this. To find the reference angle, what we're going to have to do is draw, make a little drawing like this, okay? And that's going to help us up a lot in a second, and I'll show you why. What you should do is start by drawing the angle. So for this first one, 95 degrees, we're just going to go draw it. So we know this is 90 up to here, and this is 5. So it's somewhere in the second quadrant, okay? Now the reference angle, by definition, is how far away the angle is from the x-axis, okay? That's only this axis. So how many degrees away is this angle from the x-axis? That's this distance right here. Well, what we need to know is what is this angle right here? What is, if all the way over here, it is 180 degrees. All right? And we know this is 95 degrees. And if I want to find the difference between these two angles, I just have to do 180 minus 95, and that gives me 85. So that would be the reference angle. It's always the closest, the distance between the x-axis and the angle, okay? So it really depends on the angle for where you're going to be doing your, your reference angle. So let's take a look at this one, 280. So this would be 90, this would be 180, this would be 270, and I have to keep going a little bit more, and this is 280 right here. So this is a 280 degree angle, all right? Now, the angle that it's closest to would be right here on the x-axis. Always the x-axis, don't go to the y-axis, always the x-axis, right here. That would be the closest. So I'm finding the difference. How far away is this angle, which is 280 degrees, away from this angle, which isn't zero. I've already gone far away from zero. This would be now 360 degrees. So the distance between 360 and 280, well, we just do 360 minus 280, and we get 80 degrees. All right, that would be the reference angle. If you have any more questions, let me know and I can help you out. Mm -mm -mm. Moving along. Converting degrees to radians, these are real quick. Um, a way my teacher used to tell me how to do this, if I want to convert degrees to radians, okay, you just throw a pie in its face and divide it by 180, okay? Just throw a pi in its face and divide it by 180, and then you simplify it. So if we simplify this fraction, 30 over 180, you can put it in a calculator, you can figure it out. I would say that this would be 1 -fifth, so this would just go into pi over, oh, 1 6. So this would be pi over 6, we just reduce that fraction, okay? So you just throw a pi in its face, divide it by 180, and that gives you the degrees into radians, okay? Now, if I want to go the other way, I want to convert radians into degrees, such as in this example, all we have to do is convert pi into how many degrees? And if you remember, pi is equal to 180 degrees. And that's, so that one was easy. Let's take a look at this one. All you have to do to convert a radian measure back into degrees is to turn pi into 180. So instead of writing pi, we're just going to write 5 times 180 over 4. We figure out what that is. 5 times 180 would be 900 over 4. We divide and that goes in, let's see, 225. And that's it. So remember, if you want to convert from degrees into radians, all you have to do is throw a pi in its face, divide by 180, and simplify. And if you want to convert from radians into degrees, all you have to do is change the radians, this pi sign, into 180, and do your division. All right, let's keep moving. The unit circle. Okay, these are all the things that you guys have to have memorized. Now, what I would like all of you to do is fill in this chart. Now, what you have to remember is that the unit circle has a radius of 1, so any, this distance over here is 1, and it's like that anywhere on the circle. All the x values on the outside, on the circumference of the circle, is equal to the cosine of that angle, and all the y values are equal to the sine 
of that angle. So to fill out this chart, if I wonder the sine and cosine, all I would have to do is this. At zero degrees, my point over here is my x is one, my y is zero. So my sine of zero degrees is zero, and my cosine is one. And to find out what tangent is, it's just sine over cosine, zero divided by one, which is just zero, okay? 90, you just go over here, we think of the point, this would be the point zero for x, one for y, okay? So my y value at 90 degrees is one, at cosine it is zero, and one divided by zero is undefined. And you just, to find out 182, 70, and 360, just keep going around the circle. What are your points? And figure out what these values are, okay? Now these, you also have to have memorized. You have to know sine of 30, 45, and 60. If you know those, you're good to go, okay? So the sine of 30, okay? What I'd like to do to do this chart is you just have to remember this. It's as easy as one, two, three, all right? And all you have to do is drop a two under each one of these, drop a two under these, drop a two, and put some square roots on that two and that three. So the sine of 30 is one half, the sine of 45 is square root two over two, and the sine of 60 is square root three over two. Cosine is just the other, it's as easy as three, two, one. Drop twos under all those guys, and we put some square roots on that three and two. And to find out the tangent, you have to do one half the sine divided by the cosine. I don't feel like doing that, but I know you know how to divide fractions at this point and you find out what these are. And please fill out the rest. So these are important. These are the only things you have to have memorized. 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And then you have to have 30, 45, and 60 memorized. Because all the rest of the values are derived from there. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at evaluating trig functions. I want to find the cosine of 210 degrees. Now, I don't have this memorized, but this is all you have to do. You have to find the reference angle, okay? Because all trig functions with the same reference angles have the same values. So the first thing to do is find the reference angle for 210 degrees, all right? We can look by drawing this. So if I go 210 degrees around, that's 180, and then to here, 210, okay? So this is my 210 degree angle. My closest angle on the x-axis is 180 degrees. So to find this reference angle, which is right over here, my reference angle, that's the reference angle between the angle and the x-axis, I just have to do 210 minus 180, which is 30 degrees, okay? Now that I know my reference angle, my reference angle is equal to 30 degrees, okay? Once you know that, you know that the cosine of 120 is going to be the same as the cosine of 30 degrees. All right, so now we just have to figure out what's the cosine of 30. Well, it, we just have to look in our chart and we know that square root 3 over 2. All right, so the cosine of 210 is going to be equal to square root 3 over 2, and then we just have to know if it's going to be positive or negative. Well, 210 degrees, well, let's figure this out. All student teachers cry all student teachers so only tangents positive here so we know that the t cosine of 210 has to be negative and that would be our answer <laughs> the secant now that's the reciprocal function this is the one over cosine okay so secant is equal to one over cosine the way to do this one is just to basically do this to find the secant of 210 you just have to do one over the cosine of 210 degrees. All right. We know that the cosine of 210, which we already figured out, is one over square root three over two, and it's negative. And then we're gonna have to go about and simplifying that. So what do I mean by that? You're going to flip it and multiply it. So this one is the same thing as one over one. We multiply that by two over square root three. We got two over the square root of three, and I'm about to run out of time, so you guys need to simplify that more. Remember, you can't have a radical on the bottom, and that is all for you today. Good luck, students, and I wish you the best.